explosive fires are ravaging pig barns across North America, causing millions of dollars in damage and burning thousands of hogs alive. All those piglets, I mean, they just evaporated. Pig farmers are scared to enter their own barns. There was no way I was going to live through that again. It's a puzzle for investigators, a disaster for farmers. It's our uh, livelihood gone up in smoke. The clues to what happened are hard to read. Jelly looking, moving, weird stuff. There's this perfect circle of dead pigs that are laying there. Experts are baffled. Who or what is to blame? Every time we went down a road, it always turned into a dead end. I'm thinking, why did this occur? Unless they find answers soon, more farmers will face ruin and more pigs will die. April 3rd, 2005. In southern Ontario, Canada, the Wendells family awakes to a farmer's worst nightmare. I woke up approximately 2 a.m. in the morning. The telephone was ringing, and I answered the phone, and it was the alarm system. Barn Hello? Barn alert. Security code 4. Oh, it's the alarm. The Wendell's barn, with a 1,000 pigs inside, was engulfed in flames. They were horrified. I couldn't believe that this barn that had only been up for four or five years, it was on fire. And thinking of the pigs that were in the barn and what was going on, we were just, it was just a state of shock. The fire burned a 1,000 pigs alive and destroyed a barn worth over half a million dollars. The Wendells were not alone. Soon barns all across the US and Canada were being wiped off the map. At the height of the attacks, 12 barns burned down in just three months. No one could figure out the cause, but there was a pattern. All the barns were just a few years old, and all of them were huge. Before the fires broke out, the pig industry was booming. To make the most of the high profits, many farmers had invested in a brand new type of supersized barn. We started, you know, hearing about all these barns that were going up. They were holding 2,000, 2,000 plus pigs. And we thought, wow, that would be quite the adventure. The Wendells chose a popular high-tech design a single vast barn that could hold almost two and a half thousand pigs. Everything was fine. It was a beautiful, beautiful barn. It was just fantastic. It was something that I've never seen before. Yeah, it was just a very big, exciting, nervous adventure that we were heading into. For the first five years, the Wendell's mega barn ran smoothly. The profits rolled in. On April 3rd, 2005, all that changed. When Nick went in the barn that night, he just did his usual routine. He went through the barn and checked out the pigs to see if they were okay, settling down for the night. The ventilation was working fine. The feed system was working fine. Electricity was on, and everything seemed to be just a regular, normal run-of-the-mill night at the barn. Exactly when the fire started is unknown. but it spread at a ferocious rate. I think it went from one end to the other really quick by the looks of it. You heard no pigs squealing at that point at then or nothing, so you knew they were all gone. Seeing their livestock die such a painful death was profoundly disturbing. Raising animals and seeing all these dead pigs in the barn was very, it was very hard to see. I would like to hope that they had just fallen asleep and died in their sleep, but we know that they had more than likely had suffered and they didn't have a very nice death. The 
the Wendells were not alone. Fires were breaking out in pig farms across the U.S. and Canada. Fire investigator Steve Gay set out in search of the answers. The big surprise that we had is that there were so many in a short period of time, because there's always barn fires. The conclusion seemed obvious. Someone wanted these huge barns destroyed. He made me wonder, is there somebody out there that don't like these barns? Because there's people calling these factory farms and don't want them in their neighborhood. Hard to believe that someone would actually would do that to us. So it really makes you wonder, could it be arson? Was an arsonist to blame? Steve Gay thought so. But there was a twist. The pig boom was over. Money was tight. The Wendells were astonished to find themselves under suspicion. The economy wasn't good. The, the farmers were selling pigs uh, for less than what it cost them to produce a pig. So are we looking at a bunch of uh, farmers trying to recoup some of their loss, or is it just bad luck? Steve's first step was to find the exact place where the fire started. If we can find the area of origin, that's the, the, the secret. If you can find that, then we can start to eliminate things. The problems with any investigation of a barn fire is the extensive damage. There's so much damage. Usually the barn is collapsed. If it was arson, Steve knew he would find signs of gasoline or other flammable fluids, and also signs of a break-in. But there was no sign of arson at any of the barn fires. When Steve factored in the huge geographical spread of the fires, there was only one possible conclusion. Basically, we knew it, it was an arson. If people weren't starting the fires, what was? It had to be something inside the barns. The fires were all in modern, large-scale barns. Perhaps there was a flaw in their design. Engineer Dave Johnson is convinced it had to do with the way the manure is stored. Those, uh, to scale. Old barn designs feature an outside pit to hold the manure. The new barns were different. More recently, they would build the pit, in effect, under the barn. Since the 90s, most pig barns have everything built in, including manure storage. The pig waste falls through a slatted floor into a two-meter pit. It's deep enough to store a year's worth of manure, up to six million liters. Having this pit beneath the barn saves time and money, especially during construction. To build a separate pit, you've got uh, the footings and the floor and foundation, whereas uh, here you need a foundation structure under the barn, so why not just make it a bit deeper and, and, and use it as a pit? And so from a cost standpoint, I can only imagine that it was really economics that uh, encouraged people to do that. But fire investigator Steve Gay believes that having the manure pit below the barn could be dangerous. They have all these pits of manure below the pigs where it gathers, and it basically ferments and bubbles, and we get gas created. The main one everybody hears about is methane. Methane, here trapped in bubbles, is lighter than air. It's colorless and odorless. And that makes its other attribute even more sinister. This invisible gas is also highly flammable. Methane produced in the manure pit will seep up through the floor and can fill the barn. A single spark could set it alight. Could this be enough to set an entire barn on fire it's the most obvious explanation, but what was triggering the fire in the first place? More barns burned down. Methane rising up from the manure pit was the leading suspect. In 2006, the methane in John Lumen's barn caught a light. The fire was fast and devastating. 
it just melted things right off the ceiling. It was so hot for probably four to five seconds. And then it snuffed itself out because it ran out of gas. The fire's speed was a telltale sign that methane was to blame. It created a fireball that rocketed down the inside of the barn. A flashover. A flashover is like a plume of methane that works its way up to the ceiling and uh, it, it catches an igni ignition point and it'll burn off very hot for a short period of time. The fire burned out in seconds and left the barn standing. The ventilation system should have sucked the gas away. John thinks it didn't because the barn was empty. No pigs in the barn when this happened. The barn was empty. Ventilation might have been turned a little bit too low. With the ventilation turned down, methane accumulated to dangerous levels. And it seems Nick Wendell's may have had the same problem. One room was empty. I was washed out for putting new pigs in the next day. And the ventilation goes down to minimum speed. So maybe it was not running fast enough to take the uh, methane out. Flammable methane builds up in the barns if the ventilation is turned down. But methane burns in seconds. Many of the barn fires were lasting hours. Why? Investigators knew there had to be another factor. Something unique to these modern, high-efficiency barns. Mike O'Shea remembers when the new design pig barns first came in. At one time, a 50-cell unit was kind of common for most family farms. Now, uh, those, those little operations, which were supporting families at the time, they've been replaced by 2,500-cell operations or larger. Modern pig barns are up to 50 times larger than traditional barns. But the regulations covering their design have hardly changed. The rules have stayed quite a bit the same, whether the barn was 100 feet by 100 feet or whether it was uh, 150 feet by 1,000 feet. If you have a facility that's a certain size, you shouldn't just add a zero to it and multiply it tenfold or hundredfold and expect it to behave in the same way. So there's uh, problems with just adding zeros to a design without giving some consideration to the consequences of that. Supersized barns can mean improved profit margins. But farmers may have left safety concerns behind. It was a lucrative business at the time. And, uh, you know, a little is good, a whole lot is better. And uh, there were some people that certainly expanded at, a, at an alarming rate, really. In southern Ontario, pig farmer Brenda Jackson invested in the booming hog industry. She bred sows, rearing thousands of piglets a year to sell on to other pig farms. We started off with 100 sows, and by the time 2000 came, we were up to 2,000 sows. When we started hearing about fires, we were, we were shocked because it just seemed to be trending everywhere, and we didn't know why they were happening at the time. Farmers everywhere were afraid they would be next. Brenda's fear soon became reality. At 1.30, we were woke up with all the fire trucks here, and when we got outside, the barn was completely engulfed from one end to the other. Over 33,000 square feet was completely engulfed. We couldn't see or understand why it was completely engulfed. It wasn't one spot burning more than the other. It was all gone. You could feel the heat at 50 feet away even. You could feel the heat on your face. You couldn't hear anything except the roar of the fire. It was like an inferno. The fire turned Brenda's barn to ashes. Thousands of pigs, raised for sale to other farmers, died. We had over 4,000 die. It still bothers you because you're here to protect them. You're not here to kill them. You just can't imagine what they suffered because you would never want that for them. 
it, it always haunt me seeing that and and knowing that all those piglets i mean they just evaporated and you're not here to do that to them you're, you're here to keep life that's what a sow farm is you don't you don't keep, sorry just to see all those bodies and to this day, I mean, there's still some skulls around there. And it, it brings you right back to the fire. I still don't look at the pictures. I, I just can't stand um, seeing such kind of destruction. Just like so many other barns across the US and Canada, Brenda's hog barn burned to the ground in under two hours. To have it so intense and so fast just is still mind boggling. Methane burns off in seconds Yet something fueled the barn fires for hours. What was it? Fire investigator Greg Olson has a horrifying theory. The fuel could be the pigs themselves. If you look at what pigs are, I mean, you've got very large pigs with a lot of fat. If you have a barn situation, you have basically a walking fuel load because once that barn catches on fire and the animals start to die, you're creating liquid fat. That fat will fuel the fire until either it's suppressed by the fire service or until it actually self-extinguishes. Years and years and years ago, they used to make candles out of tallow, which was animal fat. Basically, a barn is um, full of walking candles. These pieces of pig simulate what happens in a real barn inferno. Just 15 minutes after ignition, the pig fat is the only fuel left feeding the flames. If you look at the center of that fire, basically the wood is gone. You've got a little bit of uh, charred uh, straw. Well, that's not burning anymore. It's done, it's done, it's burning. But yet the flames are still really rocking in there. That's the fat itself that's, that's burning underneath the straw. That's the wick effect. That's a classic wick effect fire. If you look at what we have here is a very small portion of what a big pig producing barn would look like. Times that by a thousand. And I'll give you an idea of what a barn fire can actually do. Methane explains how the fires take hold. Pig fat explains why they burn so long and so fiercely. But what sparked the fires in the first place? Across the US and Canada, pig barn fires continue to rage. This one was captured on video by the local fire department. Almost 7,000 pigs burned alive. In 2006, one team of fire marshals formed an urgent task force to resolve the issue before more pigs were killed. What we see on the, uh, the video that Dave took is typical to the fires that I've seen. And I mean, there's an issue here with how quickly this fire spread. It was just three times bigger than anything we'd ever pulled into on any scene. It's, it's just overwhelming. We had uh, other help coming, and, but it was just too much for us. The noise and the squealing of those hogs, for anybody that has any kind of compassion, was about all you could take. They were only lasting four or five minutes, but they did die a painful and excruciating death during each of those collapses. Fire investigators were sure that methane and pig fat fueled the fires. But no fire can start without a spark. John Lumen suffered a flashover fire. He thought there was one obvious suspect. When we bring pigs in, we'll run heaters for two to three weeks uh, as they get up in size to about 80, 85 pounds, and then we shut heaters off, and then they have enough heat, body heat, to keep the barn warm. They are natural gas. Uh, with an open flame um, uh, right here. This is all open flame right here. The pilot light on a single heater was enough to trigger John's fire. But heaters couldn't explain all the fires. Some blazes occurred when the heaters were switched off. 
there had to be another trigger. You can see. When Steve Gay investigated one particular fire, he found an exceptionally disturbing piece of evidence. As I was looking for the area of origin, there's this a circle, a perfect circle of dead pigs that are laying there, maybe 20 pigs. They'd all be over on their side, just like they're sleeping with their legs out. And like I say, it was just a, a circle of, of pigs, a perfect circle. And so I'm looking at that, and I'm looking at the rest of the pigs in the barn pushed up against the sides of the walls. And I'm thinking, well, you know, why did this occur? These pigs appeared to have died before the fire had started. There must be another culprit. Steve soon discovered that methane was not the only gas rising from the manure beneath the barn. There was a second gas, and it was deadly. Hydrogen sulfide is a very deadly gas. And sometimes probably two or three breaths and you're rendered unconscious. And a few more breaths and you're going to be killed. And that is what killed the, these pigs in this one circle. Hydrogen sulfide can kill at concentrations as low as 1%. But the gas only burns at much higher concentrations. By that point, all the pigs would already be gassed, and there would have been no screams coming from the inferno. Even if it never reached flammable concentrations, hydrogen sulfide might be a key culprit. Inside the barn, it will combine with water to produce sulfuric acid. This can eat away at the electrical components. Insurance manager Randy Drysdale is trying to reduce the number of fires. He's convinced that corrosion from sulfuric acid could get the fire started. I've seen copper water lines in barns where they've just been corroded to the point where you could stick your finger through them. The electrical components, they'll start to break down in under six months, and it is very serious. Literally eats the metal and makes it break down to where there's nothing left of it. Corrosion itself cannot cause a spark, but it can cause electrical components to overheat. The way that a, an electrical panel overheats is through resistance heating. As you get corrosion, as you get breakdown, you have less contact through the electrical components and you're creating resistance. If you think about a toaster, for example, the reason a toaster works is that you put a lot of electricity through a small line, create the resistance which creates the heat which makes your toast. This is a new danger. It means that modern pig barns could contain hundreds of deadly trigger points, ready to spark a blaze. To reduce potential fire hazards, Randy and his team work full time using a thermal imaging camera to find electrical hotspots. Be prepared, this one's bad. There's something in the bottom of that panel that's 50 degrees Celsius on the outside. That means on the inside, it's gonna be really bad. Any thermal reading over room temperature is dangerous. Yeah, you can not feel it, eh? he's wrong. Yeah, it's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So that one's an immediate repair, yeah. okay. But Randy often finds hot spots that are even more alarming. It would be common for us to find temperatures over 200 degrees Celsius. The hottest circuit we've ever found it was 508 degrees Celsius. Finally, the evidence was falling into place. Methane and pig fat provide fuel for the fires. Sulfuric acid corroded electrical wires to provide the spark. To stop these deadly gases from spreading through their barns, engineers designed a novel ventilation system. It sucks the fumes directly out of the manure pit. With the new safety measure in place, the Wendell's family finally had the confidence to rebuild and start again. When we built the second barn, we didn't want to take any chances. We made sure we had proper ventilation. So there could be ventilation directly out of the manure pit rather than going up through the main part of the barn. 
We were adding different things to the barn. We were changing it structurally. Instead of having all little pens for the pigs, we decided to have big rooms. And the pigs could all wander amongst each other. We were starting to bounce back again and beginning a, a new venture with a new barn. 13 months after their tragedy, the Wendells had their lives back on track with a new, improved barn. We were sleeping in bed at night, and I heard a dog barking outside. Oh. That's Homer barking at. Homer, be quiet! I was interrupted by a gentleman saying, no, your barn's on fire. And we looked to our old barns, and he said, no, your new barn. And we're like, what? and the 410-foot barn was engulfed in flames from one end to the other. It was worse fire than I saw before. It was, it was gone, it was going. We just couldn't, couldn't believe what was happening. 1,000 pigs burned to death and the $800,000 barn was annihilated. How could this happen again? Surely the dangers were eliminated. But soon, investigators discovered yet another new culprit. Manure pits were filling up with a strange gray foam. Could this odd gloop be the real cause of the fires? When we saw the fire from the house, it was, it was gone. It was totally gone. Just to have it happen again, um, all the work and everything that we put into our barn, we put our heart and soul into that first barn. We put that much more into the second barn and we couldn't believe it happened a second time. We just couldn't believe it. You know, it was just, it was built better than the first barn. You know, there was extra precautions put into the designing and the engineering of the second barn, and here we are again, where it's totally gone. A thousand pigs were killed in the blaze. There was absolutely nothing left. It burned 100%. There was enough wood to fill it back with a pickup truck. That's all that was left. It's our uh, livelihood, gone up in smoke, not once, but twice. I'd feel pretty silly if it burned a third time. And I didn't want to go through that third time. And calling my wife definitely didn't want to go through the third time either. The insurance company wanted us to do it the third time. But I said twice is enough. I think it's all I can handle. The Wendells left pig farming for good. But the fire's cause remained a mystery. Fire investigators thought they'd solved the case. Now they faced a major challenge. Their best lead was something strange the Wendells had noticed before the barn burned. A bizarre, gloopy foam smothering the barn's manure pit. When I first seen the foam, I was kind of curious. I'd never seen it before. Didn't pay too much attention to it, but just like, like something was brewing. The foam seemed to pose no threat, so Nick ignored it. He had no idea the goo was appearing on other farms too. Fire victim John Lumen still has the mystery foam. Uh, we've got about eight or 10 inches of uh, nothing but foam, no weight here, no fluid at all. Uh, nothing but foam, jelly looking, moving, weird stuff. I've had this issue for uh, probably a number of four or five years. The first time I noticed I had a problem, I thought I had a, a, a couple broken water lines because the pit went up uh, in a matter of uh, two days, uh, probably went up a foot and a half. It was only about uh, three days, four days later, I, uh, I had a barn fire. John's original barn fire had been a flashover. 
It singed the barn's interior, but left it standing. Now he had a second fire. This time, the entire barn burned down. 600 pigs died. The fire happened right at this heater right here. Um, I was uh, put, placing pigs in these pens right here. I come uh, put these pigs in here, walked back through that door, through a hallway where there's a big opening, and I heard screaming before I got back to the truck. I ran back here, and this, the flame was coming out of the pit, was ignitioned by this heater here. I came back around the corner. The, the heat was so intense that burnt my eyebrows just 10 feet in the door, and then we ran back pulled the trucks away, and uh, these pigs, yes, they were screaming at the top of their lungs, burning alive, uh, could still hear it, and like I say, I lost uh, quite a few pigs, and that's the day the whole barn burnt down. A mystery foam had turned up in John's barn just four days before the fire. It couldn't be coincidence. John now lives in fear it could happen again. I've got this in both barns. This one seems worse than the other barn. Uh, both fires occurred here. Uh, the other barn, uh, I have foaming, but I've never had any fire issues or anything like that. More and more farmers reported the goo. Some had over a meter of it spewing up through the slatted floor. If it was causing the fires, many other barns were at risk. Brenda Jackson's farm was contaminated with the same goo. We had foam issues in the gutter, but nobody could explain what it was, why it was. Um, it didn't show up until probably two to three years before the fire. We'd seed foam in there, and we were just like, where did that come from? What was it in the feed? What was causing it? It would just all of a sudden be there in the morning. You'd see it, and uh, you'd drain the gutters immediately to make sure it wasn't touching the animals. Nobody could tell us what it is. The veterinarians didn't know, the feed company didn't know. If you didn't know it and you couldn't find out, you just kind of accepted it and kept the gutters down lower so that it didn't build up. We've already been farming 25 years and never seen it before. Could the foam be to blame for some of the fires? Speculation spread through the community. Waste management expert Larry Jacobson at the University of Minnesota was called in to investigate. It was very hard to explain. We would go to a farm, and they might have two or three barns. Uh, and uh, one barn would be foaming. The others would not be foaming. Uh, same pigs, same feed, same water. Uh, so it was very hard to, uh, to understand why it would occur in just one farm, or literally one room, when every other thing was similar. We thought we could take some samples, uh, run some fairly simple analysis, and something would pop out of the analysis, uh, be it pH or something fairly fundamental. Larry's tests couldn't determine what was generating the foam. However, he made a startling discovery about what the foam is made of. It had up to 60% uh, by volume methane. Highly flammable methane should get sucked out of the barn by the ventilation fans. Instead, it gets trapped in the foam. If you have a torch or a match, you could actually uh, see a flame uh, pop out of it. Much like you get a flame off of a, a kitchen stove, a gas stove. If the foam collapses, all the methane could belch out at once increasing the chance of a fire. But so far, no one knows where the foam comes from. Something must have changed in pig farming. One suspect is the pig's diet. I've been in the pig business for a number of years, and I've seen manure for a lot of years and never seen anything like this like I did in the last four or five years. So I'm wondering if it has anything to do with our feed or um, byproducts that we're putting in our feed, I, I, I'm not sure. Just before the gloop appeared, many farmers changed their pig feed. They added a new, cheap ingredient to the standard corn and soy. Professor Paul Loomis studies new pig feeds to see how they affect the hogs. 
A lot of research goes into the nutrition of, of pigs. The single largest factor on a commercial farm is feed costs. And so if you can drop feed costs by one, two percent, you're making a significant impact on the bottom line for hog producers. Escalating corn prices encourage some farmers to include a substitute called dried distiller's grain. It has three times the amount of protein and fat to help pile on the pounds. But this superfood also has three times the amount of fiber, which is hard to digest. Because they're higher in fiber, there will be uh, increased manure volume. It's been estimated about 5 to 10 percent increase in manure volume. There will be more fiber in the pit, which provides more material for the microbes that are in the manure to produce any of the manure gases. Bacteria within the manure feed on the undigested fiber and produce the methane gas. More fiber means more bacteria and more methane. But what triggers the foam remains a riddle. There's something happening with the feed somewhere, with the, with the environment, with something that is causing this. Um, so certainly I would be surprised if feed had no impact on it. The new feed seemed to increase the amount of methane. Desperate for answers, many pig farmers ran their own feed trials. We did change feed rations at different times to see if we could combat it and see if that we were producing too much methane and it didn't change it, it was still there. Our rations are always based on the animal's productivity, not on the cheapest, so there wasn't anything that we knew that was specifically involving to create it. It just appeared one day. It wasn't as if it was in a state, it never went away. Answers were slow in coming. Several anxious farmers approached Canadian swine engineer Robert Chambers to resolve the foaming problem. A lot of people had just uh, considered it a nuisance. They uh, sort of managed it themselves. They didn't really seem to know what to do with it. Rumors were still spreading that the new feed was to blame. So Robert investigated more cases of foaming barns. Certainly the feed could be be an issue, but then we found a couple of farms that uh, had some foaming issues way before the, the distiller's grains came into the market. Over in the U.S., Larry Jacobson also investigated the suspicious new feed supplement. We did see barns that uh, were feeding distiller's grains and had no foam. Uh, our survey that we did uh, probably found foaming only occurring in about 25% of these barns. It seems that feed alone isn't triggering the foam. The mystery continues. The race is on to isolate the cause and fix the problem before more barns are destroyed and more pigs are burned alive. The situation is already so bad that some farmers have rebuilt, only to be hit again. It's our uh, livelihood, gone up in smoke, not once but twice. Many farmers and investigators are convinced that a mysterious foam is to blame. The bubbles are filled with methane, an ultra flammable gas. If something bursts the bubbles, the methane could ignite. The foam increases fire risks in another way, too. The foam will come in and plug up the pit fan entrances. A lot of our barns are ventilated through the pits, and therefore the foam sort of works its way over and actually physically blocks the, the air from getting into the, into the pit fans. If the fans can't work, the flammable gases can't be vented. Clearly, it's not safe to leave the gloop in the pits. But worryingly, it could be just as dangerous to remove it. The obvious first reaction is to get rid of it. And the best way to get rid of this is either uh, start pumping manure or uh, spraying water on it to knock it down. But there's a problem. Pumping or spraying bursts the delicate foam bubbles, releasing huge amounts of methane. The foam is a never-ending fire risk. 
it seemed like, uh, as I described to people, every time we went down a road, it always turned into a dead end. We think, okay, that's the problem, and we keep going and going, and eventually it would turn into a dead end. A large pig barn can hold six million liters of manure in the pit beneath the barn, as well as over one meter of foam on top. We really don't know the fundamental cause of it. Uh, we have some pretty good ideas of some possibilities or things that uh, result in it, but we really can't explain the true reasons behind why it's foaming. Researchers had already examined a pig feed called dried distiller's grain. Now Larry Jacobson suspected that some versions of it contained chemicals that could act as a foaming agent in the manure. But for now, nothing is certain. This has become uh, kind of a, a, a personal uh, mission on my part to come up with a solution to this and really getting to the bottom of it. Ideally, we would like to be able to tell producers uh, what they could do to eliminate or prevent it from happening. Right now, uh, the best we can do is suggest certain additives and things to manage the problem. Larry has resorted to chemical warfare against the foam. He adds a cocktail of chemicals to the manure to stop the dangerous foam from forming. It looks like he's winning. The number of barn fires is decreasing. But there could be other reasons. Right now, the pig industry is in decline. Many pig barns lie empty. I don't know for sure, but maybe the statistics would show that there's fewer of those facilities in operation, hence fewer problems. Small profit margins have squeezed many farmers out of the pig industry. It was very much our livelihood. It was something, you know, we lived, breathed, ate pigs 24-7. The Wendells were one family to leave the pig business behind in favor of more secure arable farming. I think at this point we're out. There's a lot of farmers that uh, had to leave the market, leave their farms, get out of pigs due to the, the market and the financial situations. And there's just not the money in it anymore. And I think that, as well as the fire, basically tells us, yeah, it's just not meant to be for us. No pigs means no manure. And it looks like no manure means no fires. But pig farmers remain on the brink of disaster. I just question the, the uh, validity of having these pits underneath. To put a pit under your barn and, and expect to be in there each day, both with your animals as well as your own family or whoever, or employees as the case may be, then my goodness, it just doesn't seem like the right way to, to deal with it when, uh, when there's that risk involved. As long as the manure is beneath the barn, the threat of toxic fumes like hydrogen sulfide will remain. To combat this invisible killer, gas monitors can now detect and reveal its presence. But this is a simple enhancement compared to the steps taken by a handful of farmers. Determined to stay one step ahead of the fires, Brenda Jackson traveled across five different countries searching for the latest technology for her new barn. This is basically a burn-proof barn. The walls are sandwich walls, which means cement, styrofoam and cement. Uh, they basically hold the environment temperature stable. I've got drywall above the ceiling, which in most pig farms, I don't think you'll find any that have that, which is uh, added prevention. I put more fire codes, breaks in my uh, dividers in my ceiling as well. And I've taken a big consideration is under pit ventilation, and there'll be no electrical um, plug-ins in this building whatsoever. No heat lights at all, no plug-ins, nothing. Brenda has even changed the feed system, ensuring each pig has a specific diet to increase performance and reduce waste that could lead to methane. Each one of these feed systems that come into this facility can be micromanaging the feed into the animal and what comes out of the animal, we can micromanage our manure pits. We can add stuff to the feed at any time to control the gases. This is a one-of-a-kind building. There is no other building like this built as far as we know that we could find. For thousands of farmers across North America, 
it's too late and too expensive to redesign their entire barn. For the majority, it seems that the threat of fire is still a daily fear. You can go out and try and change the building code, but if there's six or 7,000 barns that were built a certain way, the cure isn't to great new barns. The prevention part of that aspect is to go in and say, let's make sure that the ones we have aren't going to burn. If pig farmers can't build fire precautions in their barns, perhaps the dangers will remain. The corrosive hydrogen sulfide, the flammable methane gas, the horrifying fact that pigs themselves can fuel the fire, and the mysterious goo, still not fully explained, that could destroy their livelihood and kill their livestock at any moment. Will we ever have another hogbine fire? For sure. Somewhere. <laughs>